This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue the transfer of training with book 3 In chapter 2, this is section 5 Opening to the Dreamer of the Dream Perspective Part 2 David, you believe that choices and decisions are in linear time. You are describing it as if you had a choice back then. Who was the I that had that choice? The body. The body. The body seems to have choice. Or beyond that. What are you? A person? So you must believe that persons have choices. Not only does the body have choice, but it seems like other bodies can also make choices. Do you think that these other bodies had choices to make in their past? Like the one you are talking about? You believe that too. (laughs) There we go. Now we are getting down to some of the fundamental building blocks of what you believe. You believe that persons have choices. You believe there were real choices in the past. Do you believe there are some real choices coming up in the future? There we go. So it is obvious you believe that choice is within the realm of linear time. And that persons are the instruments or the agents of choice. The entities that have choice. We have to follow that in to see if there is a choice or a decision that will end all choice. When would that have to be? Friend, now. Because now is the only time there is. But I still think of now as a moving now. David. Oh, a moving now. So there is a past now and a future now? (laughs) Friend, the past is always following now and the future is always being pushed off by the new now. That is the way I think of it as this marching now. David. Yeah. That is good. Now we are getting into your beliefs about time. We have past now and future now. (laughs) Friend, I was reading something once where a teacher was saying that if you have an appointment next week on Thursday at noon, you write that down and when that becomes now, you go to that appointment. It certainly seems like there are weeks to come and I have made commitments, like to be at work at 3.15 today. Even though I understand the clock is just going around and really nothing is changing, when the clock shows 3 o'clock, I will make every attempt to get up and go until I can see something else that allows me to say, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. David, you believe it and therefore you have experiences that witness to it, including reading what the teacher was saying. The mind gets exactly what it wants. The mind sees what it believes. If the mind believes in linear time, it sees a world in which time seems to be linear. It sees other figures in the dream as well that also seem to be moving around on the clock. So we question, 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 question. If there is a choice that will end all these seeming choices, then it has to be now and it has to be a choice that is very different than the choices of the world. Different than choosing to buy a car, to work somewhere, to marry someone or to leave the house today. The choice that we are talking about is a choice of content, not of form. You have to question all the personal choices of the world. 
to have children or not to have children, to go to work or not to go to work. All the choices you believe are real in the past and all the ones you believe are real in the future, you have to question them and ask if there really is a choice. Are you open to a choice of purpose? To a choice of con content? Are you open to a choice of purpose? To a choice of content that you can only make right now? Friend, but isn't it always right now? Could I have made that choice yesterday? David, who? Who is it? You still believe there is an I. Friend, okay, let me take it away from that. When I begin to realize that I am not a body, I will realize I have always been in eternity and that will be right now. Because it is always now in eternity? David, it is important not to get too hung up. But I think it is great that you are seeing how it all boils down to time. You are just by sitting here and talking about it. You are saying that yes, you do believe in past choices. And yes, you do believe in future choices. And yes, you believe in that person that had past choices and will have future choices. All of that is in the wrong mind. As you continue to be willing to take a closer look at it all and to open to the idea that perhaps you have been mistaken about everything, you are opening up to an experience that is different than the way it seemed to be. It will come. It has come. You will accept it. You will be aware of it. Friend, I still have this feeling there was a time when I did not accept it. I have a feeling that what life seems to be about is this acceptance. David, the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. Text chapter 2, section 5. Soul responsibility. Not your responsibilities at work or as a parent or as a husband. It is not about your responsibilities as a law-abiding citizen. It can be as simple as that. Your sole responsibility is to accept the atonement. Friend, I guess we need to talk more about what that involves because I do not know. Those are just words to me right now. David, have we talked about anything other than that in these se sessions? That is what a teaching session is. We look at what is in the way of that acceptance right now. What a joy to begin to see some of the assumptions you believe in even though it may not feel comfortable to believe in illusions but not have a clue that you believe in illusions. Is that what you want? You think you are living in the real world and you do not even have a clue there is anything beyond this. Mind? What is a mind? I cannot see it. I cannot taste it. I cannot touch it. I do not even know that there is such a thing as mind. You are twice removed from reality when you believe in the reality of what the senses show you without realizing there is anything beyond that. Once removed from reality is when you begin to see that this is a world of your own making. You read in the Course that you have made this world up and that it comes from your beliefs. Well, that can still be uncomfortable. Where is the rest in the belief that you have bought into false beliefs? But now you are just one step from reality. You are going back into the mind and seeing that this is not you. 
The ego is history. Before you can come to accept the atonement, you have to first raise the ego into awareness and see it for what it is. Do not be fooled by all the changing forms. You have to raise ego thinking to awareness. This has to come. The awareness that the ego is history has to be perceived. The ego is false. The ego is past. The ego is nothing. You have to question time. You have to question linear time. You have to question cause and effect. You have to look into those things before you can meaningfully and experientially say that the ego is nothing. Otherwise, it would be denial. Oh great, nothing happened. But how do I feel? It sure feels like something happened. That is where the questioning comes in. There is no amount of words that will ever deny the ego. There is only an experience. The miracle is a denial of the ego. But the miracle is not just a bunch of words. It is not like you can memorize the book until you reach a certain point where you say, I have got it. I have generated enough words to dispel the ego. <laughs> that will not do it. That is why we are not into studying the ego for the sake of studying the ego. The purpose is to come to the awareness of the miracle. The miracle dispels the ego. Traditional psychotherapy is a symbol of studying the ego. Where does studying the ego's defense mechanisms get you if it does not give you peace, joy and happiness? What good does it do to know about defense mechanisms? What is the good of scrutinizing the ego or even studying the course if you are not happy? Why read the words if you are not applying them? If you do not go within your mind to find a clear inner sense of discernment, it is just another ego maneuver. The ego will use the course to protect itself by hiding behind fancy sounding words. In the clarification of terms section called The Ego, The Miracle, Jesus tells us that we cannot really define the ego, but the miracle is its opposite. The miracle shows us that the ego was. That is the key. You have to see that the ego is past, not present. There is no ego now. Can you grasp the clarity of that? There is no David now. There are no friends now. There is no past, present or future now. There are no private minds now. There is a singular mind now. Personhood and everything we talk about was. Singleness of mind is. That is the key distinction. Let's use our metaphor of the cosmos. It is distortion of wrong-minded. It is distortion or wrong-minded when you are viewing the cosmos from a perspective that seems to be within the cosmos. The miracle is seeing the cosmos for what it is, from a perspective that is not in the cosmos, seeing the false as false, seeing that the past is past. Questioning is helpful initially because you are open to receiving another answer. You are open to receiving the Holy Spirit. But an experience will come that will put an end to the questions. The questions will seem meaningless. 
You are getting a glimpse of that now. A lot of questions that seem to be asked before do not seem meaningful as they once did. They do not seem as serious. The deceived mind makes up questions to still God's voice. It asks what I call wonder questions, seeming questions that are really statements. Every time you hear thoughts like, I wonder why so-and-so did that to so-and-so, just imagine a little sign going up behind you that says, I am an ego. I wonder why I am an ego. And what might a meaningful question be? Am I willing to help the Holy Spirit save the world? Hmm, that is a different question then. Should I buy the burrito or the soft chicken taco? Taco. End of section 5 of chapter 2 of book 3 of Unwind Your Mind.